Just a quick reminder, if you want to join us on our adventures, you can. We have small groups organized for next year and we still got spaces on our trips to Uzbekistan or the Balkans. So if you'd like to join us, make sure to contact us. We'll leave the link to do that in the description box below. After a 4,000 kilometer journey down from Bangkok, we finally made it to our last destination on this trip, Bali. Welcome to Bali. This is actually our first time here in Indonesia and in Bali in general. We've heard so many things about this place in particular. When people hear that we travel full time, I think the first thing pretty much everybody asks if we have been to Bali. And <laughs> now we can say yes. We've also heard so many times that this place has some sort of magnetic pool that once you come here, you just don't want to leave. And many people come here not just to holiday, but make it their long-term permanent home from all over the world. We are so curious to see how this place will make us feel and how it actually is because, you know, people talk a lot, people say many things, people like to glorify things, especially online. So we'd like to see over the next few days what this place is really like. We're very excited to explore the area where we're staying, Changu, and let me actually show you the place where we're going to stay for the next couple of days. Bali aesthetic, not gonna lie. This is what you imagine, the villa, like this, when you come and stay here. The thing I love about this villa in particular is actually the location. We're really close from here to Perirenan beach and all of the action, but also far enough away that it feels really quiet. So on that note, let's head out for a walk into Changu and have a look around. Changu is located on the south coast of the island and tourism first started here among surfing enthusiasts. One of the things that captures every visitor to Bali is the completely unique culture and religion. Indonesia is an island nation and each island has its own unique culture, but perhaps none are as unique to the one that's formed in Bali. Unlike much of the rest of Indonesia, which has a Muslim majority, Bali is home to a unique branch of Hinduism, which is unusual for this region of the world. The Balinese are steeped in tradition and many partake in religious ceremonies and make offerings every single day, such as coffee, incense and something called kanang. The main native language among the Balinese isn't Bahasa, the main language of Indonesia, but Balinese, with around 3 million speakers. We've read so many times about the friendly locals and the so-called smiles of Bali, and even after a day or so here is something we felt already. The locals, even just the ones that pass on the street, make you feel at ease and at home straight away. When you travel, you often see many incredible places or try amazing foods, but it's often those little things, the smile of a local, a welcoming gesture that really stick in your head. Hello? We've had many times before that apparently traffic here in Bali is quite bad and apparently over the last year it's gotten even worse because even more and more people are coming here to Bali and to be honest it is quite bad I don't think we've ever seen traffic that bad before we've seen heavy traffic but because the roads are so tiny and narrow they're just not built for the amount of people that are moving here so yeah it's just been mental to be honest to get around and if you're here I think if you're like us prefer to walk everywhere you'll be pretty screwed i think you definitely need a scooter like a bike if you're planning to leave here or come on holiday but because we're here only for a few days we uh didn't want to do that because i would probably crash and break something <laughs>
Bali isn't only Changu and the surfer beaches of the south. As you move inland, the climate and landscapes change. Rice paddies rise up the hillsides and the rainforests meet mountains. Most of us have seen images of people doing yoga with views over the rainforests. Well, if that's what you are into, then the area to head is inland, to a place called Ubud. Ubud is known among locals for its traditional crafts and dances, as well as some of the most famous Hindu shrines on the island. In recent years, the population of Ubud, along with the coastal regions, has ballooned, with people moving from all over the world to feel and partake in its unique vibes. With an influx of outside money being spent and invested in Bali, of course there are many positives to the local economy. But the sheer amount of people moving here is undoubtedly putting pressure on its infrastructure. We of course mentioned the traffic on the tiny roads, but the so-called gentrification of certain areas has inevitably led to a price rise. With Western-style cafes opening up everywhere, luxury villas being built all around, you can see it when you're just walking the streets. It's caused some locals to be priced out. We've watched certain videos of some people calling the situation here in Bali a modern form of colonialism. And of course, with everything in life, it's far more nuanced than this. And whilst being here, we've actually heard that here in Indonesia, there are some systems in place to include locals in the price boom. Property here in the Changu area is going through the roof at the moment. It seems like there's a bit of a building's arms race going on. But what's interesting about all of the people moving here from abroad and buying properties is you can't actually legally buy a property and buy land outright as a foreigner here in Bali. The only way you can do it is if you open an Indonesian company where an Indonesian citizen owns more than 50% of the company or you buy the lease to the property, which is usually 25 years, after which time you have to give the property back or extend your lease for another 30,000 or whatever dollars, which is a system that for us is totally not normal, not something we're used to. But here it's thought of to protect the citizens, protect the locals from the influx of foreign money into the area, which is kind of a good thing. We thought that it's going to feel quite artificial here, but to be honest, it doesn't at all. It feels quite raw and authentic, even in the part of Bali where we are, which is like the party, the party place, the place to be. It doesn't feel artificial at all. It feels I don't know, completely different to how we expected. Every single house you walk past has a shrine. And they're all so gorgeous, so beautiful. Here in the center of Changu, there seems to be hipster cafes and restaurants popping up all over the place, as well as the local street food and the local Indonesian cuisine. It seems that every culture and every nationality that comes here to Bali and settles and opens their own cafe, brings their own little piece of culture, their own cuisine to the place, which is amazing. It only makes the entirety of Bali richer, more interesting, and to be honest, every single cafe that we've eaten in so far has been absolutely amazingly good the food here is so so good oh honestly i don't say that lightly in just a few days we've been to vegan cafes tried incredible street food sampled some of bali's famous hipster coffees and even had a traditional british roast dinner
Heading down onto the beach around Changu was when we first really felt that famous vibe or magnetic pull that everyone talks about. It's hard to describe why. It's a beautiful beach, but by far not the most incredible we've seen. It's more about standing on the sand and watching the kites flying, the surfers out at sea, and other people just living in the moment and enjoying life. That last point is going to be one of the lasting memories from our time in Changu. The feeling is a complicated one, but essentially everyone here from the locals to the tourists seem to just enjoy life. You can't help but feed off that positive energy and buy into it. So, as the sun went down, we grabbed our beer and sat down with the crowds to soak in the famous Bali sunset. And believe me, they're incredibly beautiful. staying a little bit longer <laughs> that is something we weren't expecting to say to be honest when we originally booked for four nights to stay here in five days we thought that would be absolutely plenty uh, yeah and we would be well and truly ready to go mm -hmm. <sighs> but yeah but we end up liking it <laughs> which we didn't expect not gonna lie because i don't know why we had our assumptions about this place that it's going to be white pretentious mm. and fake but it's genuinely not when you get here people are really nice everyone just gets on with their life Every, the vibe actually the atmosphere is really chilled and friendly you know we said at the beginning of the video um, we wanted to understand why this place has a sort of magnetic pull to it and why people when they arrive feel like they don't want to leave mm. but I think after being here for four days now we can understand that I can't really describe what it is about Bali it's just got you said about a vibe it's just got something about it that makes you want to be here yeah it's all about how you feel in a place right yeah. there are lots of different factors like it can get as busy as you want and as quiet as you want especially in this area where we're staying and it feels like sort of an authentic villagey feel to it but at the same time you have everything here you can go to any gym you want and then you have some tennis courts and any cafes you can go local you can not mm -hmm. and there is the beach where you can surf and it's extremely gorgeous as well like all these rice fields and the beach itself and like the sunsets it, it's got many factors obviously it doesn't come without any downfalls like the traffic situation mm. um which is something we thought when we first arrived we wouldn't be able to get used to we straight away we were absolutely <laughs> shocked by how many cars there were when we arrived in Denpasar mm. and we were trying to get to Changu uh, we got blocked on the way and our driver had to go all the way around it was, like 19 minutes. It it was 10 kilometers and, and it took an yeah, hour and a half 10 kilometers. yeah but it actually adds to the charm in many ways of the place it's, it's all part of the atmosphere and as we said yesterday that you can get off the main roads and walk along the smaller roads going through the rice paddies and you don't see so much traffic and you suddenly feel like you've been transported to a completely different place mm -hmm. and I love that about here you said it has a villagey feel mm. it does and at the same time it has a feel of modernity to it and yeah. and then the beauty of the little shrines inside mm. people's gardens yeah, and on the amazing. street and the greenery everywhere it's just incredible and you adore the kites they're, they're, oh i love the kites that is so i don't know sweet and heartwarming so needless to say now we feel that four days in bali is definitely not enough mm -mm. um we've only been in the changu area we didn't get to go to uluwatu we didn't get to go to mm -hmm. ubud 
or into other parts of the island. And we're definitely, definitely, definitely going to be coming back 1000%. That's without a doubt. The question is just for how long in order to feel like surf. you really, yes. <laughs> really like you see the island and to surf. Yeah. We want to learn how to surf now. Yeah, definitely. We are a little bit shaken up, shaken up this morning because we woke up at four. We're filming this, today is 29th of August and there was like a massive earthquake last night. Um, it was 7.1, yeah. I think on the scale, and uh, it was very long, it was very strong. So we were only on the second floor, but it felt very powerful. The last time we felt an earthquake, this is our third earthquake that we felt now. Yeah. One was in Oaxaca in Mexico, um, and the other okay. one, yeah, it was okay. Okay. Yeah, saying now probably because you know this yeah. happened and it's like but the other one was in Uzbekistan on the border with Afghanistan yeah. and that felt similar to this but this one we were on the second floor mm -hmm. and there we were on the eighth floor I think and, and thankfully here we actually read online that the earthquake did happen because in Uzbekistan when we went downstairs <laughs> in this hotel people were trying to make out that nothing happened and there was no yeah, earthquake yeah, yeah. they were like making us out to to look like idiots. <laughs> so to sum things up, we like Bali now. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we need to get to the airport oh, because yeah. the time is 7.30. Our flights are 11, but the traffic. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching this video and see you in the next one. Mwah.